answering your questions about marriage from easiest to hardest. You ready? Freedom asks, the more time you spend together, does it get easy to manage different tasks? Like whose turn is it to clean, cook, and so on? We definitely learn more about ourselves and each other with time. Right. So we learn each other's strengths, each other's weaknesses, and we learn our own strengths mm -hmm. and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And I think the best way we found to work around this balance is to both focus on our strengths. And then whenever we need help, additional help, then we, we communicate that and we, exactly. we, we kind of tangle around. <laughs> it is all about the communication because after over 10 years together, you begin to really yin and yang, I guess you can say. Because Nami is kind of the CEO, the boss around the business. I have to play the other role because someone has to cook and someone has to I'm the body and you're the shadow. <laughs> right. When we have three kids, you got to get them up. You got to feed them breakfast. You got to get them ready for school, drop them off and all that. Right. So you have to balance. I can't make you do everything. Right. And it's not like you are in charge of fully like the child care. Like no, the evenings we do it together. And, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We do exactly the same time. But you know what? As a house husband, I kind of am the house husband. I've developed a principle over the years. Okay. There's five things I need to do. Okay. Okay. There's five C's that I need to do. Okay. I need to oh, cook. no. Stop. I need to cook. I know where this is going. I need to clean. I need to care for Nami. There's a lot of things that happen in the days and the weeks and you got to care. And... I need to bring in some cash, all right? So we work together in the business. Why is your head down? Okay. I need talk. to actually be useful and bring in some cash into the home, you know, even if we're working together. And the very last C is I need to make sure <laughs> you can... Okay, that's it. That's good, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Meep. You want to go, you want to come to the next question? Random Bubble asks, how do you know he was the one? <gasps> what are your most treasured memories as a family? Aww. Have a good day. Thank you, Bubble. I hope you had a great four years. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, we're really sorry that we've been putting this channel on kind of the back burner because I was going through extreme severe depression. Right. It wasn't severe. It was Very moderate, bad. but it was the worst that I've ever experienced. Yeah. And the worst that, you know, our family has ever experienced. You had some severe bouts. Severe I did. Yeah. I, I did. I did. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying now that things are much better and more stable. We're really trying to create more content for you here on this channel and really reconnect with you. We didn't really know that we were the ones for each other. We knew that we wanted to stay in each other's lives. Like I saw myself staying, like being friends with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't really see, like, we had such a strong friendship and a good dynamic. Yeah. We had a really great balance that mm -hmm. I, I couldn't imagine anyone else being more important to me than you. Right. But we didn't start off with, like, romance or, no. like, infatuation or, like, oh, you're my ideal type. Like, there wasn't anything like that. But it was a deeper connection there that we just felt. We never connected with anyone else that same way. Right. It was a very strong, rooted friendship mm -hmm. with shared values, shared goals that we want yeah. to reach out to. Right. And those things change over time. Mm -hmm. We change together. My most treasured moments as a family, I do think recently, I think it's now. It's like the present. Yeah. It is every day. <laughs> it's kind of like when you were doing dishes together yeah. with the kids. And when we play video games all together as a yeah. family, it's just every day we're creating new, most treasured moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just get more and more treasured. Mm -hmm. It took us so long to get to this point. Right. Because it was so hard when the when both boys were so young and we were learning how to parent. Right. And we were balancing like so many things. And I think now we're balancing more, right. but we're able to prioritize better. Exactly. And really see where we need to focus our attention at the right time mm -hmm. and the timing. So that's really, it just comes with practice. Right. And, and focus. Yeah. And intentionality, like really trying your best to yes. work better. Alicia asks, what's a misconception about marriage young people, high school, believe in? Marriage is your end goal. When really it's just the start. I like that. Can you unpack that a bit? 
we think like, oh, milestones in life, you know, you you study, okay, you finish studying, you get a job, okay, you finish that part and then you get married and then have kids. The end, your life is over. When you get married, then it's like a new start. Whether you wanna stay single or not, that that's not your end goal. And if you do decide to get married, you're starting from step zero. Right. You're starting a new chapter where you have to start from scratch again. And I think there's a bit of a fear about marriage. Too. Right. Like there's the whole saying like 50% of all marriages end up in divorce. Mm -hmm. I think that's a major misconception because you're calculating all the marriages that happen in this year compared to all the marriages divorces. that were already existent. Yeah, and, and all the divorced. divorces. Of all the pool of marriages that exist. How many people are getting born now versus how many people are dying out of all the people that lived? Oh my goodness, like there's 50% of people dying. Right. But that it doesn't yeah, exactly. calculate that way. Yeah, marriage is difficult, but it is something that you work through on mm -hmm. a daily basis. Right. And if you do that, if you keep clean habits, then it's really not as hard as other people make it out to be too. What's a clean habit? A clean habit, I think, would be like constant communication. Right. That's like so... making sure that you're managing your emotions. Yeah. Working on yourselves, working on each other. Zom Stina asks, how do you manage your finances slash support your kids at such a young age? I am recently married and struggling to save up for a home and mm -hmm. would love to know how you guys did it. Well, actually, we haven't done No, it. we haven't. <laughs> A home Especially price here. in Canada. Right. In Ontario, the Canada, is... the house prices have just been ridiculous. I think we're like... Really impossible. I mean, I, we are still in the building stage. Yeah, like average house prices here are like $2 million. Right. In Toronto, in the yeah. Toronto area. And even outside of the city, mm -hmm. it's around... It's all over a million dollars. So I take a very strong investment approach. So it's kind of like a 50, 30, 20 rule. And these numbers can change, but... I try to keep make sure our expenses don't exceed 50% mm -hmm. monthly expenses. 30% are investments and 20% are saving. And we've been a bit heavier on the investment portion. In the beginning, we worked a lot because yes, as young parents, it was very difficult to build enough cash flow to, to support the kids. Uh, as self-employed, yeah. Extracurricular programs right. um, to just pay for all the bills mm -hmm. and also have enough to invest for their future, like right. the future investments. So something that we were doing it was putting in like $700 every month for their savings for education. Each, yeah. And we do have life insurances set up for each of the kids mm -hmm. so that after about 10, 20 years, it's all paid for. We want to build generational wealth for our kids so that they will be more financially secure and free when they're older. Another thing we're implementing is we're talking a lot about finances and money. Uh, while they are young about business concepts and money management mm -hmm. and investments and savings mm -hmm. and just having having money being uh, not something that is an awkward topic in the house mm -hmm. growing up i think that's very important finances that come in like you manage it right. even I from my that. account you'll sign yes. in and just right arrange it i think we have that like full trust yeah so for well. me it's like it's not like my money your money and that's like different business. for every marriage too and every relationship even if yeah. you're happening or if you're just dating or whatever it's gonna look different typically what relationship therapists would recommend is for my income, account for you, your account income for me, but there was a joint account as well for the that is a large home expenses and right. this and that if we do have like a big lumpy expense for example your braces or mm -hmm. my physiotherapy or something then we just discuss it and then say like is this an expense that we need yes okay then right. that just comes out of the total and I think there's a lot of trust built there about money. Right. Because we've never fought about money. Right. But it is the number one topic that couples usually do fight about. And I think it's okay, mm. too. I think yeah. it's, so, yeah, of it's course. different for everyone. It's different for everyone, But yeah. um, that's, this is a very interesting part of our lives because it, I feel like it doesn't fit the norm. As Stephanie says, from my own experience, marriage and having a baby is tough especially if it's all happening at once. Mm -hmm. I too got married and was pregnant. We're separated now. But how did you guys manage to overcome the issues and avoid fighting? <laughs> we did not we avoid fighting. We did not fighting. avoid fighting. That's how you overcome it. You have to fight in a safe way. In a safe right? way, yeah. Right. If it's like toxic or abusive, 
then Obviously. You, know, you have to remove yourself from mm-hmm. the fighting. Conflict can be very helpful in understanding each other. Right. The majority yeah. of divorces are in low conflict relationships. Right. And I yeah. think like we laugh because we used to fight three times a day. Yeah. Maybe more. That was the beginning and of our relationship. Yeah. And then after we got married, we actually started fighting less. Yes. Because we felt like a lot of things were more settled Mm -hmm. in terms of the topics that we were fighting about before. Yeah. And then after, I think what really helped us was to learn how to fight again Mm -hmm. and learn how to discuss and talk because we found that as we spent less time talking and less time fighting, we were actually growing a little bit more distant. yeah. Right. More fights and then we got re-banded. Yes, yes. (laughs) Which was good. Yes. It was hard, but it was good. So conflict can be very healthy and sometimes it's necessary in any relationship, right? Mm-hmm. You have conflict and then you find resolution. In that right. resolution, you understand each other more. And if you have a hard time fighting constructively, mm-hmm. then we would definitely recommend finding a mediator. Yes. It could be someone you trust, a friend who wouldn't really have a bias between you two, right. or a family member who wouldn't have a bias between you two, or even a professional or a stranger that could really help to come together and bring things to the table in a very neutral manner. Right. And I think that's really what helps because most fights come out with misunderstandings like right. they're not there were many mediators in our lives seek professional help they're professionals they love the job yeah and they're studied in it they they enjoy the hot tea yeah relationship <laughs> therapists it's so awesome even just one session you can mm-hmm. learn so much about yes. yourself about your partner and about it'll the change relationship. like how you communicate and how right. you are offended from each other exactly yeah like there's what you don't mean. There's different ways to say sorry and how mm-hmm. the sorry is perceived. Did you have any struggles when you both first started living together? And did you guys discover something new about one another when first moving in? So when we first moved in together, we rented a room in a bungalow. There was another older couple across from us in another room. And then there was another uh, single lady in the basement and another single man in the basement. Yeah. And then also the garage was rented out to my mom's salon. So we were pretty poor. <laughs> <laughs> we both came from poverty backgrounds yeah. and both our parents are immigrants with no, with nothing. But that's going to change, okay? Yeah, There's let's always do it. <laughs> one person in a generation who breaks the cycle of, yes. you know, just brokenness yeah. <laughs> right you can't not gonna, that's not that's not acceptable no that's not, no not gonna not happen. for our kids no no no, yeah. no. <laughs> so i think actually it was really great to experience that with you really like it didn't bother us like we were just totally like you know this is how it is so you just do make the best out of what we had right and it was hard because we had to kind of and they were eating our nutella but anyway <laughs> um like, we buy a new jar, we don't touch it for, like, a week, and it's empty! <laughs> anyway, there were a lot of, I guess, like, there there were struggles between us, too, but we tried to really enjoy the moment. Right, like, and there were many struggles along the way. Yes, yes, even after that. I think we always had struggles before and even after, so it didn't feel like there were any yeah, new struggles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in fact, it felt better after moving in because we didn't have to travel to see each other. We were together all the time anyway, and... And you didn't have to make separate time to see each other. Like you come home and then you're together. Yeah. So that was better. Yeah. And then we also can kind of like sit side by side while doing our own hobbies. Yeah. I know. I think it got better actually because we were together more. Right. Jennifer asks, did you and Michael have a phase where you constantly fought? And if so, how did you overcome it? I love you, by the way. (laughs) I love you too. And I love how everyone's asking about fighting and we keep saying that we always fought. Yeah. (laughs) And I think there has to be a structure in fighting yes. too. So one thing that we have is called the OSR, which is the operating surgical, surgery, surgical room. Yeah. So it's a time of the day at night for us when the kids are all asleep. And it's a safe time and space where you can share Just and talk. dissect. And dissect your deepest pains and needs. And sometimes, I mean, there's rules that you establish. Like if something hurts too much to talk about then we can wait. And that's a time when you can be vulnerable and not mm. be judged and hated right, or resented right. at, right? Yeah. These are some set rules. And it's like are... a room where we know that we're both talking about ourselves. 
not attacking each other. Yeah. And that environment really keeps it safe because it's not in front of the kids. It's not in public. Right. It's not suddenly like a burst of like emotion. Right. In the, while you're doing dishes or something like it, you reserve that time separately. So it yes. keeps both of us safe. You can have some structure around right. the conflict, bettering Better, the relationship yeah. and bettering, improving understanding right. and communication. Yeah. And I would say we still fight but they're not fights anymore they're discussions now yeah like we got better at fighting yeah where yeah. now we fight neutrally right yeah. yeah and we know that it's not an attack to each other it's not an attack to our character it's not an attack to who we are it's just a way to figure out how to make things work yes it's very rare that things become resentful right and that's the huge cancer to relationships when yeah resent is planted you just like hold on to something yeah it affects like, every you interaction need to remove those roots right away you have to talk about it to yeah. remove it you gotta yeah. surface it up you have to communicate it. operate in a surgical operate. room and it takes two people yeah if one person's running away or one person's just fighting and then it's right. not gonna work you don't want to if you're more expressive you don't want to attack if you're more analytical you don't want to avoid you don't want to become rules-based and everything's structured and autocratic my way or the highway and at the same time you don't want to be a people pleaser mm -hmm. you have to find ways to communicate effectively mm -hmm. without running away it's really just you have to recognize that you're both there to work on the relationship the, there's you there's me and then there's the relationship yeah it's a separate entity that you yeah. both have to nurture and care for and that can get really hard sometimes and you have to realize hey your intention is really not to hurt destroy each other, and yeah. hurt the other person if i mean if it is way, then you need to leave yeah that's that's not a relationship like if they're really intending to hurt you that's not a relationship that's yeah. abuse yeah and hurt can come in many ways like i want to hurt your career i want to hurt your family relationships yeah hurt, hurt your financial stability like like there's many ways yeah. someone can come in and actually want to actually cause harm want, yeah that's not a relationship that's abuse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sai zem asks are you feeling in love with each other as much as the first day i think more 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 we we never really Every loved each year. other yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's but we funny. Still you keep making fun of my waddling. Yeah, and then I'm like, yeah, she I didn't look. I didn't look at him like, twice. Oh, ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just like, oh, waddler. <laughs> yeah, but we made good, good friends, and I yeah. think you know, made to play together, stay together. Yeah, and we're we're even better friends than we were yes. when we first met and we were exactly. the best of friends that we had for each other when we first met. So how much more are we better right. friends now? Right. I think as a man, you know, you got to put the ring on it. You ought to <laughs> publicly commemorate and celebrate and say, Hey, I am here amongst my friends and community and other strangers, everyone. I'm going to commit my life to this woman and go through the, all the ups and downs in life with mm -hmm. her. And it's yeah. going to be hard. Very, 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 very hard. But it will be worth it. And if he doesn't do that, why? Yeah. So you have to really know, like, sometimes people are just in relationships just to benefit from them mm -hmm. and then stagnate. They don't want to do anything to work on the relationship. That's already telling. Red flag. Yeah. And so why are we continuing to waste our energy and time on a relationship that is literally not there? Do you have to really see how you feel with them mm. and see how you are growing together? Exactly. Such so smart. Hi, IQ. <laughs> Your IQ is higher than mine, actually. It's true. My EQ is higher than yours. Yes, level. it is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Daryl asks, did you ever think of breaking up with him. I never actually thought of actually doing it, but you broke up with me! I did? Yeah. Oh. Don't you remember? We broke up for like two days. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember now. Oh, you remember? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. you can tell the story then. We started our relationship as a courtship. We, I said, right from the beginning, tell everybody, tell everybody in the church, tell all the community, know that we're dating so that eyes can be on us, so that there's accountability. Mm -hmm. And honestly, my purpose, my outlook on relationships- And we were both in high school, so it was like you wanted it to be serious, but not- It is serious. Yeah, you wanted it to be serious, yeah. so you didn't want it to just be it's like a flame the, thing. That's why you wanted it to be thing. a courtship. Exactly, okay, let me explain. Even you when said we're- I talk, why are you talking about Even it? when we're in let high me talk. school. Okay. okay. 
for me, a relationship points towards marriage, okay? If a relationship is not going towards marriage, then the relationship is useless. And then a marriage is ultimately to glorify God. And that's, you know, that's just the way I view it. And that's how I viewed it from the very start. Mm -hmm. And so you were the very, the only person I ever, you know, we, we only dated each other. Yeah. And so we, we've only known each other in, in that sense. So, um, Let me just hide a second. <laughs> you wanted our relationship to be serious. And so did I. But everyone around us was like, you guys are in high school. You're too young for a serious relationship thinking right, about marriage. Right. So they were like, you should break up. Yeah. And then so you were like, oh, I'm worried about like, Everyone is like saying this is wrong of us to pursue a serious courtship relationship to lead to marriage. So therefore, I think we should break up. But then, right, right. but then we still kept talking the same way for yeah. like the next two days. So we're like, eh, yeah. whatever, screw them. <laughs> so we didn't listen to everyone. And sometimes everyone can be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Which they were. It was the case. So yeah, you're right. Screw them. <laughs> Nina asks, did you ever get bored of each other? Honestly. I think rather than bored, you can go through difficulties and it can ruminate thoughts and ideas of, oh, how is it with this person? How was it if we never did? And I don't think boredom is the reason why you would leave. Though, if you are entering a relationship because someone is fun, oftentimes you, the reason someone leaves the relationship is because of the very same reason why they entered one. Mm -hmm. It's because something else is more fun. So right. if you're in a relationship just to have fun, there's a high likely chance you will leave that relationship for something more, for something fun. more mm -hmm. fun. I think that is kind of the, the, be the, the answer behind the question first. Mm -hmm. But because we entered our relationship out of commitment, boredom was just a normal Not, yeah. part. It's like when right. you're driving in a car sometimes. You're bored. It's a three-hour <laughs> drive and you get bored. It's just a part of the process of a yeah. relationship. I guess you can get bored, but also there's many more things than bored. Mm -hmm. A lot of people might think that Michael's boring or could be a boring person, especially in our social circles and our, our local community because he doesn't talk much and he's very stoic, but I think he's so interesting. <laughs> so different from me i can never understand what he's thinking so i'm always picking at you uh, picking at your brain and trying to understand what's inside because it's such a hard like stone statue that i'm like there has to be some mush in there like trying to figure it out so i've never been bored that way and mm -hmm. i think like it's the same the other way around where mm -hmm. i'm always so crazy that you would never expect someone to be so crazy that right. it's just so intriguing yeah <laughs> very cool Randy asks, what is one thing you wish you could do better at every single day? I'm every single six years into marriage and I wish I could be better at being romantic. Congratulations. Yeah, being romantic is important, especially if that's the love language of your Absolutely. partner. Absolutely, yes. I think I would like to just be a better me every day. Right. Because a better me makes a better wife, makes a better mom, makes a better right. bunny mom, makes a better cook, makes a better yeah. cleaner. And when you in worker. that process, you change. Yes. And we have to change together. Yes. If we have share a growth mindset, an abundance mindset, not a fixed mindset where we just want to stay. Uh, we don't want to learn. We don't want to be coachable. I, yeah, I, we just want people to adapt to our if, thinking. Yeah, if I was like that and you weren't, then we would be drifting apart. Yes, we had to realign that too. Like when yes. we do feel that drifting and that different mindset, then we teach each other the, the new mindset. Right, right. I think one thing I'm working on that I really have to work on is also myself. I have to become, for you in a sense, more healthy and attractive. So I'm trying to... But lose. you got like this because you're working on my mental health. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it takes time though. It's process. Yeah. It's seasons and life. Yeah. And you know, with three kids, that was difficult. Mm -hmm. So for me, I stress eat. So yeah. I gained, I packed on a lot and of weight. In the same in the way, process. if you say it the reverse way, like I have to work on my mental health and myself and taking care of like standing on my own feet so that I can let you be healthy. Yes. So you're not like carrying me on your back and all the kids. And then you're literally like yeah. backpacking us. <laughs> but I had to do that. There was a time and a place where I had to do right. that. Yeah. Yes. One thing I'm kind of more proud of these days is well, yeah, I need to be better romantic and yeah. better in bed, right? Meep. For you, Nami, it's very important that 
because you know you're so busy and around the clock and I have to um, allow you to you know be be very sexually satisfied <laughs> what's so what's so not funny <laughs> you would you say though like I become better yes okay in long time ago you were like out of 10 0.5 now you're like a 12 yeah you know what let's go 15 so going back to one of the previous questions I have to get questions. surgery on my bladder first I, I'm, I have really bad genetics as a man you know if you're married married men Ugh. cook clean care bring in some cash and make your wife if he if he if he wants to he will if he doesn't then learn know your worth know your worth and learn <laughs> by tori since you've been married what is a hardship that took a very long time to overcome a very long time i think a very a long time well for me a struggle was internet pornography from when I, when I was seven. And I was like 20 years up until I was like 27, mm -hmm. 28. Mm -hmm. And that was huge. And it wasn't because of the desire. It wasn't like a lust for desire. Mm -hmm. It became more of a unhealthy medium for comfort or escape mm -hmm. or intimacy. And, and you were exposed to it because of like lack of parental supervision. Yeah, and then bad like friend bad groups. friend group. Yes. Yeah. From that young age, it really wires your development right. to where like it becomes a norm. Right. Pornography, the way I look at it now, is you're throwing rocks at windows. Like it's it's a very immature thing to do. And you have to grow out of it. It's so common now. I think with TikTok and hypersexualized mm -hmm. media. Yeah. Like pornography is so just normal, normalized, right? yeah. Yeah, so now I'm kind of treating it as if it's a normal process that a boy goes through. And so mm. a boy would then, to become a man, you'd have but to like, grow female, out of pornography. Yeah, female children also consume that type of adult media. Right. But I just think that it's really bad for our brains in a health perspective. Yeah. Because it's like eating junk food. Yeah. It's, it's like the it's dopamine fake. triggers. It's curated. Right. And it twists your perception of reality. It's also very addictive. It can be more yes. addictive, addictive than cocaine based on... Based know, on psychological studies. studies. And you're always looking for a new novel stimulus to feed Because you get destimulated, yeah. yeah. Or... Um, desensitized. Desensitized, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the overcoming is you have to talk. And sometimes it's not just your wife. It's a communal effort. Mm -hmm. Like I shared with other mentors of mine... Counselor, professional that counselors. That it was a struggle that you wanted to come out of. Yeah. Yeah. Pastors, friends, parents. Like I even mm -hmm. did a talk. Uh, I spoke at conferences. Mm -hmm. and About I shared it. Yeah. My story. I shared my struggle mm -hmm. as a way to help and encourage others who mm -hmm. are struggling and wanting to go out of the right. same thing. I think within the marriage, I mean, the, the largest cohort who would consume that kind of content is actually married, married men. men. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. So, I mean, but... Of all men, married men make up the biggest cohort in general, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not just to consume that media. Yeah. So. so you have to really realize that every time you're going into that, like it's, it's, you're devaluing yourself and it's immature. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's silly now. It's so silly. <laughs> I think another big difficulty could be uh, emotional infidelity or desire like liking someone else mm -hmm. being in love with someone else even though we're in a marriage relationship and so that's happened with me as well mm -hmm. and that and was myself also too with both of us yeah. and that was very painful moments but i think it's normal too because it is very normal we're human yeah. we live with emotion like right. emotion is our and right. emotion is not rational. Yeah. So sometimes we could do things that like, or feel things that are completely like right. illogical. And what's so important is, is when your marriage can become safe and powerful enough where you can share about these things and then care for each other, build mm -hmm. each other. And see like and where, what is the missing pieces there. Yeah. I think yeah. this can be a separate, totally separate yeah. video. But for me, I realized that it wasn't that I was liking the other person. It was that I was liking who I was becoming. 
with in the eyes I, of other people. In the eyes of another person. So it was all about myself mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the end. And that has to be talked about and mm-hmm. transformed. You have to realize this. Yeah. The longest struggle that I think I had in our whole relationship was my insecurity because mm. of my trauma growing up. It's funny that you agree with me right away mm-hmm. <laughs> because it was a huge thorn in our relationship for so long. I think like because of my abandonment with my parents, yeah. neglect, and just a lot of loneliness with no friends and, and just bullying and all these things that right. it really caused me to always feel afraid that you're going to leave me or afraid that you don't love me or afraid right. that like you like I'm not your priority. Right. Because I've never been anyone's priority. Okay. And I think that's something that like people really need yeah. is to feel worth and to be needed by other people right or else what's the point of living like i think that's why i was so depressed my whole life since childhood is because i had no purpose of my life like why am i even alive if like no one needs me here like what's the point exactly (laughs) so like even when we were getting married like i was still extremely afraid that like you didn't want to be with me or you know like especially when you're trying to respect your parents and wait on them and their opinion. I'm like, you don't love me. Mm. (laughs) And I think that was like, had to do with my psychology and my brain health, which I'm really glad that we finally took care of in 2020. Oh my gosh. All the years. It took so many years, right? It took so many years to heal that and to really work on, you know, what's causing these feelings, what's causing... Um, this problem, it, it's a much more internal struggle of my being. Just like you yeah. said, it was about yourself, not yeah. about other people or not about the relationship or yeah. not about yeah. your behavior. It's just like everything that we say and do comes from our inside. Right. And it was a problem of my my mental health and my my emotional, like relational health. And really working on that helped like crush Right. my insecurity right. completely powerful and, and now i'm just like i'm the best like yeah you, you would never like it yeah and <laughs> and that's why it's so important to for men you know don't give up so easily keep working keep serving mm-hmm. and have the long-term scope perspective like what's the what's why are you in a relationship yeah. And where do you want the relationship to That's go? That's the problem, too, is that most people get into relationships for selfish reasons, right? They they don't like the person because they like the person. Right. They like who the person is to them. If you're a man like that, then you suck. <laughs> Change. <laughs> but no. women, too, right? Like, some girls date around just to get free food. Like, are you dumb? Like, Your purpose work. is to get some free food. Then you're going to be homeless for the rest of your life, like just getting free food. Like, what about an actual man who gives you the five C's? Like, isn't that better? Yeah. Like, work on yourself so that you can attract men like that who give you the five C's. Yeah. You know what? We learned so much through the years. Mm -hmm. And we thank you so much. Yeah, we just hope you're really healthy and safe. Yeah. And we hope to see you next time. In the meantime, check out this video that YouTube recommends you to watch next. And we'll see you very soon.